Okay, yeah. yeah. So no taking is strongly recommended. And again, you are going to be asked to, you know, type or speak about one principle that you think is the most significant in within the seven principles and you know that you think impacts the society or economically economy the most <laughs> okay let's start off with the first one first one so the first one is scarcity first forces trade-offs definition for this principle is because our wants are unlimited but the resources are limited, we have to make the choice of what we want the most. So for example, A is not available. I will get B instead because A is not available. I am forced to get B. Um, let's see, there are these two types of water bottles, right? I really want A, but there's no more A. So I have to get B. That's what this means scarcity of one thing forces you to get another would you guys say that this is a normative or positive decision positive yes that's correct because you don't have a you have to get b there's nothing to take in consideration uh, okay that does anyone have anything any questions about the first principle Okay, I'm gonna assume everyone is clear on what scarcity forces trace off is. Okay, number two, Ella, cost Ella versus benefit. I think. Huh? Ella has a question, I think. Oh, Ella, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm a bit confused on what you meant. Is it like the scarcity forces trade offs? Like you have two options, but the one you want isn't available, so you get the other one, or is it choosing between two things that you both want that are available? And you're, like, you're not choosing yeah. which one. When you're choosing, that is the second principle. Because okay, cost you. versus benefit. But number one, you're not choose. You're being forced to get one because the other is not available because of scarcity. So when you don't have one thing, you're forced to choose something else. And most of the time, people use substitutions. Yes. So. Um, Another example, if you don't fully really understand, um, let's say there are two types of cereals. You always get the chocolate flavor, but there's no more chocolate flavor left. You have to get the honey flavor. That's what a scarcity forces trace off means. Sometimes it's scarcity forces trace off. Scarcity means that once it's gone, it's gone forever, right? But a shortage means it's temporarily gone. Usually it's, um, shortage versus trade-off, but mo sometimes it's scarcity versus trade-offs. So we're just gonna keep it as scarcity versus trade-offs. Okay, and move on to the second one, cost versus benefit. This is the um, similar to the first one, but different from the first one. The first one of all, scarcity versus trade-off is a positive decision as what LJ said, I remember. Uh, yeah, was LJ said, but the second one is a normative decision. You have to consider the cost and the benefit of two products. Let's say, okay, uh, let's use the water bottle example again. Um, let's say I want A, but there's B, but A right now is too expensive. So I will get B. A is too expensive, so I will get B. They get I will benefit similarly from both. Even if I will benefit a little bit less from B, but B is cheaper. So considering the costs and benefit of the two products, you make a decision. Yeah. That is a normative and positive decision because yeah. you don't have to consider the past. So it's kind of in between. Right. So an example of this, you know, a definition of this would be uh, people make decisions based on what it will cost cost them versus how much it will benefit them and this is something that we go through every single time we purchase something and this is often hypothetical so we go through the situation in our heads first and then make the choice those who are familiar with the cost but unfamiliar with the potential benefit will take an economic risk and that's often happening in the stock market. 
Uh, yes, and the cost and benefit might be different for different people. Um, for example, oh, right now I have a hundred dollars, and you okay? Let's say right now I have a hundred dollars, and Amy has a hundred dollars. I want to use these a hundred dollars for stocks because it will, I think it will benefit me because I know how to invest it. But Amy wants to spend this a hundred dollars on food because right now she is hungry. She thinks rather than buying stock, I would rather like to fulfill myself first so I'm full and I will have good energy. So considering the cost and benefit, it might differ from everyone. And those are the decisions as what Amy said, we have to face every day. You know, when you go to the grocery market, when you go to a makeup store, there are so many choices of a single item. There's 10 choices of a cereal, a uh, hundred choices of different mascaras. So you have to consider the cost versus benefit in making the decision of what you want to purchase. That's correct. Uh, yeah, so the definition in a sentence for the second principle is that people make decisions based on what will cost them versus what will benefit them. That's what the second principle means. Correct. Are we all clear on what the second one means? Okay. If not, we can move on. Okay, uh, the third one. Third one. Third one is a marketing strategy, right? Amy, what do you want to explain this one? Sure. So the principle three is thinking on margin, and when mentioning margin, it comes to mind that there is a boundary, right? Boundary of something. But if you think at margin, it is the most daily economic decisions we make are not drastic. Say, I want my expected price for this water bottle is $50 and they're selling it for $54. That's not out of my range. So that's a margin that I can adjust. And usually we think of it as adding one unit to whatever your normal to your normal habit or even one unit less to your normal habit. So would you benefit from that extra one or just not buying anything, right? So this is thinking on margin. So whenever you have a price in mind, it can always be adjusted a little bit more, a little bit less. And yeah. it's known as the marginal benefit versus mar uh, marginal cost. Yeah, for example, if we were to use the third principle thinking at margin as a marketing strategy, if I were a worker, I mean, a manager at Publix, and I want, I really want to sell this lettuce by the end of today. Um, I maybe say, oh, buy three lettuce, get one free. So I'll just add a little more to encourage you to make the decision of making this perfect purchase. Or I'll just, let's see, a little less. Um, let's say if everyone wants the lettuce, but right now the lettuce is $2 each. Maybe I'll do $2.50 each. Everyone will still go buy it because it's only 15 cents more, but I will benefit more that they'll just spend a little bit more. That's, That's what right. I mean. So thinking at margin. So here's a measure margin. You can always adjust it little by little. Uh, that's basically what it means. That's correct. Yeah. So this is the most daily economic decisions that we are um, not, that are not that drastic. So we, we won't even notice when we're making these decisions. Thinking at margin. Okay, does anyone have any questions about this principle? This principle was one of the most confusing one when I was taught, because I I just couldn't get the concept that when you're out a little more, out a little less, how does that affect anything? Well, because I was confused because I never even think about it. Because if one thing is 15 more cents expensive, I won't even notice because it's fine with me. Do, do you understand what this means? Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions? And make sure to take notes because at the end, we, you are going to say one 
that you think is the most important within those seven principles. Mm -hmm. Okay, LJ, what do you think? <laughs> Um, I kind of understand what you're saying, but I don't really understand the like proper definition of what thinking at a margin is. Yeah, I, I definitely. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. So I would say um, thinking at margin, thinking of a thing as adding one unit to whatever is your normal habit. So your normal habit of, let me think of an example. Um, cup of coffee. Considering, it's five okay, dollars. yeah. Your normative, okay. Your normative habit is to go to Duncan, Duncan to buy a coffee that costs four dollars. That's your normal habit. Every morning you go to public to go to Duncan to buy one cup of coffee for four dollars. Mm -hmm. But today Duncan is closed. So you're thinking at margin, okay, I can go to Starbucks. It's just a little different. The taste is a little different. It might be 50 more cents expensive. I'm fine with that. So you're adjusting a little for your normal habit, but you're something that you're fine with. Right. So thinking at margin is expanding or shortening your margin a little bit. And the official definition, as Rena mentioned, is thinking of adding one unit or a little bit to whatever your normal habit is. Does that explain your question, LJ? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. If anyone is not clear, please ask because we want you guys to be clear when this meeting is over. Okay, uh, don't be afraid. Incentive sway this. Oh yeah, Jenny. Uh, yeah. Ahead. Uh, I just wanted to ask, so thinking at margin is like, are you guys saying that this is like a, it's a temporary thing? It's like not something that you always do? Or is it like? Yeah. Well, not we always do for one thing. It's a daily decision that we always come across, but we don't do it constantly towards one thing. <laughs> like adding a little more to your normal habit. Your normal habit is to what you do every day. Thinking at margin is being flexible in your brain that, oh, my normal habit can be adjusted a little. Normally, I only spend $50 on groceries every week, but sometimes I only spend $45. Sometimes I will spend $55. Yeah, I'll repeat that. Yeah, so like sometimes I, I, like normally I only spend $50 on groceries every week. But if I eat a little less this week, I probably will only spend $45. But the next week I may eat a little more, I spend $55. So it's only a little more or a little less. It doesn't really affect me that much, but it there are differences. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what it means. We can come back to it afterwards if you guys still don't understand. Uh, yeah, we can go back to anyone, yeah. Um, Ella, what did you say? Uh, Ella said, like when prices go up or like buying the same thing somewhere else than usual, where it's only a little bit more or less expensive. Yes, that's true. Yeah, and it also yeah. works when the same place, you know, go, you know, when we go through inflation or when a restaurant closes one of its locations and the other location increases its, its prices, this can always work. This all works with uh, thinking at margin. Yeah, and a lot of business use this strategy to increase their price. Okay, I'm gonna use this water bottle again because that's what's next to me. Uh, okay, let's, this water costs $40. Hydro flask costs $40. Um, adding five more dollars, I will still buy it. $45 and $40 doesn't really affect that much of a difference for me. But if the business were to add five more dollars onto it and everyone adds $5 onto their profit, they will make a lot more money than just using $45. Right. And the opposite of thinking a margin is when, say you normally buy a coffee for $5 and it suddenly increases price to $6.
you probably wouldn't considering buying it because six dollars and four dollars has a different a dramatic ratio and that's something you might think oh if i'm thinking on margin this does not benefit in me enough to make me pay you know 20 percent of the original price more and similar yes. with the water bottle if it's selling at 40 but now it's selling at 70 or you know yeah. 60, i wouldn't buy it because that's not at my margin yeah in microeconomics, microeconomics, as Wazara said, is the decision made between family, individual, and a business. If a business were to make a normative decision of thinking at margin, how can we make more money? We're selling this water bottle right now for $40, and we want to make more money. If we increase to 45, okay, I guess a lot of people will still buy it. They might not even notice the price difference. But if we suddenly increase the price of the bottle from $40 to $70, our sales is gonna go down, okay? Because thinking on margin is not increasing a big difference, it's only adding a little more or a little less. Okay, so principle number four is incentive sweet decisions. And just looking at this, this title, it's not very self-explanatory, so it's, basically explain that people respond to incentives such as sale or buy one, get one free or buy one, get 50% off. Those are all incentives that people respond to. And say example, you need shoes, but not immediate. Uh, you need yeah. shoes, but not right now, but you still want shoes. And when the store says 50% off, of course, you can go for it. You're not going to wait until when you actually need it because there is a incentive going on that you're going to respond to. And this is something called incentive sway decisions. Um, and another yeah. attraction may be, this is only for a limited amount of time. So of course, I'm going to, people are going to respond it and say, oh, uh, it's going to end soon. I need to do it now. That's something called incentive sway decisions. Um, yeah, to further explain, incentives sway decisions. Look at the three words. Incentives are created by producers. They're created by the people who want to make the sale. Sway means to convey, to um, convince. To convince, yeah. And decisions are made by the customers, are made by the consumers, are made by us. So. The salespeople, let's say if I work at Publix, I'm just using, okay, I work at a grocery store and I really, really want to sell this um, canned fish. And right, and I want to create incentives so that people are willing to buy this canned fish. I'm, I might place this in the space and say, buy one, get one free. People see this and say, wow, this is a great deal, it's a great incentive, I am swayed to make this decision, I will buy it. Right. And another strategy people use is um, free shipping within 24 hours. I'm sure you guys seen this when online shopping, right? Like 24 hours of free shipping, order now, place the order now. And you all think, oh, I have to place the order now under 24 hours so I get free shipping. That's what I always do. Yes, incentives are marketing strategies. That is one of the biggest marketing strategies people use. New Year sales, Christmas sales, Black Fridays, those are all incentives that switch your decision. You guys know Black Friday is a big thing here in the US. Um, I, so day after Thanksgiving, everyone go out and shop because there's deals in every store. And only that day, people think only on Black Friday, I will get those deals. So I have to go shopping. So I have to buy something to make it worth it. Right, and this incentive sway decision not only is in terms of pricing and beneficial of resources, but also it can be say, you buy this SAT tutoring guarantee that you get a good score. This is another type of incentive sway decision. It's swaying you to say, oh, if I take this course, if I pay for it, I will do well on my SAT. Of course, people want this service to benefit their, their, their own future or their college application. Yeah. So this is another type of incentive sway yeah. decisions. Yeah, incentive sway decisions is one of the 
biggest marketing strategies. These usually commercials you see on TV. It's like um, this toothpaste will whiten your teeth within five minutes, or this water bottle will keep your iced water for the entire day. So any commercialized things that try to convey you, try to make you to make the decision, try to um, what's the word? Amy? Convince. Try to convince you to make a purchase. Are incentives sway decisions? I think this is pretty good. You guys pretty um, well understand this. Uh, any questions? I think we can move on to the fifth. Yeah, this or also comes. I just giving another example. So yeah. this also comes to our daily lives. It's something that you know the government uses to force us to make a decision that to our own benefit. So say for the in the United States, there are special parking places for uh, those who cannot move easily or those who have injured. So they will say, mm, if you park here, there will be a fine. And after you see that incentive, it will sway you to say, oh, I'm not going to park here because I don't want to get fined. That's something that's government regulation incentive swaying decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And again, decisions are normative and positive. Within this, there's not really, it's usually positive decisions because you're just saying, oh, that thing's on sale and it's over within three hours. I have to buy it right now. You don't have to really consider the past to make this decision is normally normally positive decision. But maybe sometimes it's normative, normative decision when you're someone who works in the market area with, when you're someone who knows uh, these marketing strategies. Yeah, for example, um, this goes on sale. Let's say um, the chips in Costco goes on sale, $5 off a $15 chip, $5, $5 off. But people who are observant might look at the expiration date. Oh, it's expiring. Costco don't want it anymore. That's why they're selling it for less. Like, but mostly it's positive decision-making. And again, positive decision-making are at the moment decision-making. Okay. The fifth one, does anyone have any questions? Fifth principle, a fourth? Okay, we can move on. Fifth one, trade is good. The title is pretty self-explanatory. Trade is good. I have something you want, but I don't want it. And you have something that I want that you don't want. So we trade. <laughs> okay, trading, we all know what trade means, right? I give you something, you give me something. Yeah, we're all, ha all happy. The producers, they produce ice cream. They don't want the ice cream because they produce it. They have so much, but they want your money. So you get the ice cream, I get the money. Yay, that's a trade. Trade is good. That is one of, that is a key factor in economics. I'm not gonna go too much into it yet. When we're talking about which one is the most important, um, you're gonna explain uh, yeah. what you think it. So essentially this means that both parties end up have being satisfied with the transaction. It doesn't have to be, you yeah. know, money, but it can be, you know, when we're in kindergarten, I trade you some chips, you trade me a brownie. That is also trade. That's yeah. leaving both people happy. Another example of trade is factories. I give you my, um, my labor, you give me money. I work for you, you give me money. That is trading. You know, when, you're, when your parents go to work or when, you, or when you go to work, if you go to work, you use your labor to trade their money. Working for someone and they give you money, that is a trade. We're doing trading every day, okay? I give the, um, I pay my utilities. They give me water, they give me uh, electricity. Everything is trading, okay? Um, so trade is good. That is the fifth principle. Does anyone have any questions? Usually these days we all use money to trade, to trade for the things we want. Um, the factories use money to trade for our labor. We use our money to trade for food, to trade for groceries. So 
uh, yeah, that's the that trade is good. That's the fifth yeah. principle. So trading for other when, people's services. Yeah. When you think of trade, think of exchange, a capitalism. That's where trade is. Okay. Six. There needs to be a market for trade to occur. What is a market? Does anyone want to try to tell me what, what is a market? Okay, so a market is a place where a seller and a buyer gets together or get together. That's a very good definition. LJ, what do you think? I was going to say a market is a place where things are bought and sold. So maybe like services and goods. That's really good. Yeah. Who else? Maybe who's the third person? Uh, she on raise her hand. Oh, Jenny. Go ahead, Jenny. Um, I was just going to say that it's a place where people offer up what they like think that other people would want. That someone is like um, appeased by it or like um, thinks of it as something they would want. Definitely. All three of you give very, very accurate definitions. That's that's 100% correct. You guys already know these. Okay. So basically what a market is, a market is an arrangement that brings buyers and sellers together to do business. Okay. Anywhere can be a market. Let's see right now, Amy and I are at home and I want her chips and she want my salad. I give her my salad. She give me her chip. We just create created a market and a trade just occurred. A market doesn't have to be a specific location for it to occur, but a market is where a seller and a buyer start together. Right, okay. so a market is an arrangement that brings buyers and sellers together to do business. Yeah, trade cannot occur without a market because trade can only occur when there is a buyer and when there is a seller. If the buyers and sellers are together, that is a market. Market can be supermarkets, farmer market, fleet market, black markets, those are all markets. Stock markets. Yeah, so- you know what I mean? Everything says markets, markets, markets. Yeah, so if we consider, oh, what has changed, you know, from before to now? Well, markets before are in person where two people actually get together. But now markets has, expanded to online markets, say you uh, online shop and you do Uber shopping. Those are all markets and they bring together two parties that trade. Wherever a trade is occurred, it is a market. Um, I'm just gonna go on a little more to market. There are three types of market. We have free market, limited market and a restricted market. A free market, there are three types, let me repeat them. Free market, limited market, and restricted market. A free market is you can sell whatever you want, whatever you want. You can sell drugs, you can sell alcohol, sell whatever. <laughs> that is what a free market means, okay? That is what a free market means. There, there's no, really not that much free market still exists today, but usually free markets are illegal markets, okay? Usually free market are black markets, okay? So that's what free market means. And two more, one more is limited market and restricted market. Limited market is almost all markets today. You can sell most things, but you can, you can sell most of the things, but are, there are limitations, limitations. So tell me, is Amazon a limited market or a free market? Amazon. You can just show it. Limited, yes, a hundred percent limited because on Amazon, you can sell, you can sell water bottles, you can sell vegetables, you can sell books, you can sell almost everything, but you can't sell um, heroin. You restricted market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Amazon is not a black market. Restricted market. Restricted market are restricted market that you just, a lot, you can't sell a lot of things. There is not, most markets today are limited Restricted market, Amy, I, I don't know how to give an example. Do you know? Okay, so restricted markets are markets that are restricted to sell a certain thing. Say a bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, they're restricted to sell books and sometimes some pencils or craft, 
craft arts or something related to books and crafts, but they cannot sell, they cannot grocery. sell a grocery inside a bookstore. That's just not within the restrictive limit. And that's something restricted market. And those markets are usually small and they're targeting a specific audience. Or oh, yeah. but there are a lot of restricted market around, but okay, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, restricted markets. Um, okay, yeah. Are we all clear on the different type of market and what market means and why there needs to be a market to be for a trade to occur? We understand. Okay. So that's the six. We have one more left. Last one. Number seven. There are consequences. Okay. Before we, before Amy and I explain what it is, does anyone want to say what they think this means? There are consequences. Uh, I think it means that we need to be considering our actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I thought, like, based on all of the other um, like, principles that we had talked about, like, each and every single one of these, whether they're positive or normative decisions, they, like, they have a downside to them, in a sense. For mm -hmm. example, um, I was looking at four incentive sway decisions. Like, if you continuously allow yourself to get swayed by incentives, like, you can... Um, you can cause yourself to like, you know, run out of money in a sense, because like Black Friday is a really good time to like get things that you think you might need, which you might not actually need. But like you could actually be spending more money than you would on a normal day, like with right. your normal budget or like what you usually get. So um, each and every single one of these principles, if you use them too much or um, you are you're you're not smart with your decisions, they could lead to certain consequences. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good example, Jenny. I love that. Okay, mm -hmm. Ella, what do you think? Are there are consequences for like what you buy because when you buy something that supports the business and if the business is, I don't know, using like um, sweatshops to like create their things, you're negatively impacting so many people around the world. Is it basically whatever um, decisions that you make, um, there's always going to be consequences for them. So you have to think of the pros and cons and it literally mm -hmm. across anything. So all decisions that you make in life. That's perfect. Oh, I'm drawing something right now. Have you guys seen this symbol? This second symbol will be off here. This symbol? Oh, the yin yang? Yes. Within the black, there's always a little white. Within the white, there's always a little black. There's always consequences. No matter how good your decision make, no matter how successful there you are, there's always a little bit other. There's always, okay, this is a very bad drawing, but you get the idea. Um, there are always consequences. I, you guys already understand what it means. I don't yeah, really need to go further. Yeah. Yeah, it's in one way or another. Mm, I think that Rina example is very good. So when everything is going well and you think, I'm not trying to put a bad thing to everyone, but it's true that when everything's going well, there's always going to be that little thing that's, you know, not, might not be too good. So say something, someone is really, really successful in, in their business, but it might not be something that's bad about their business, but maybe because they're really tired, their health is being affected. That's the bad thing about his or her success you know it's not always oh my business yeah. this part is failing or that part is failing but other parts are flourishing it's maybe another yeah. part of say my health is being affected so there are always consequences no matter what you do no matter how successful you are there's always consequences yeah That's what that consequence means. people often hide or not speak about because it takes away the shininess that's being put yeah. forth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that basically concludes the seven principles. Do you guys have any questions about any principles before we think about which one we think is the most important before we start sharing our ideas? Because you really need to know these before, uh, before talking about it. If you have any questions, yeah. 
got it. Is it okay if you go over trade is good again? Oh, trade is good. Yes, of course. Um, trade is good. That's the sixth principle, right? Trade is good. Trade is necessary, right? Trade is the whole thing in economics. Let's let me look at my notes. That's so first, thought. first principle is scarcity versus trade off. I want a. I really want A, but A, a is not available. I want to get B. What is happening? You're making a decision to buy something. When you're buying something from a seller, that is a trade. In enable for principle one, principle ones to occur, there has to be a trade. Number two, principle two, cost versus benefit. You're considering, oh, product A will benefit me more or product B, considering the cost and benefit. When you're buying something, you're placing a trade, okay? For number two to occur, you also need a trade. Number three, thinking a margin, adding a little more or adding a little less. You also need a trade to, for that to occur. And let me go over the three types of, uh, wait, that's market, trading, yeah. So trade, yeah, go ahead. So the principle is that trade is good. And in an economy, we need this trade because it benefits our society. It benefits the people within the economy. And one of the definition of trade is good is that this trade leaves both parties satisfied. And we have, if we have a lot of trades, it leaves multiple geometrically people satisfied. And when people are satisfied, the economy is good. This is why trade is good is a essential but impact to our economy <laughs> yes other questions if you don't have any questions look at these seven principles on your notes and think about oh, which one is the most important out of the seven that you think there's no right answer but just think which one is the most important you think that affects the economy if you can't pick one that's super important you can think at margin. You can think at margin, you can add one more that you think, oh, this one is as equal as important. Our third principle, think at margin, right? You can add a little bit more to our request. We're asking you to share one, but you can you can share, oh, I think these two are equally important. Um, I had briefly talked about this before, um, but I believe that four and uh, seven are the ones that I thought were the most important. Um, and I think that they build off of each other in a way. Um, like I was saying before, incentive swaying decisions, like um, to some degree, it can be a good thing when you're like buying things 20%, 25% uh, off at, at a certain store at a certain time, but it can also be harmful to you if you mm -hmm. continuously um, buy more or you buy things that you don't need at all. Um, mm -hmm. and I also thought that like, there being consequences is something that makes it so that it holds people who are like focusing on economics accountable, making sure that they understand that not everything's going to be great. Um, so they need a like way, I believe someone else had said this before, I don't know if it was Ella, but um, they had said that you have to weigh the pros and the cons of what you're doing. Um, and I think that's something that's really important. And you were talking about how people don't really talk about the negative in certain circumstances, which makes people blinded to, to what's like the, the, the problems that come with um, of course. what they might be doing. So I feel like it makes it so that uh, like people like us who are like looking into economics and trying to understand it, it holds us accountable making sure that we actually research these things and try to see like what could go wrong or what could go bad in these certain situations. That's some very, very good arguments. You not only talk about why you think they're important, you also talk about how they affect people's daily lives. That's a very good argument. So I chose just one and I, ch I, I chose the seven, their consequences, because I thought about it like, our day is full with decisions and every decision has a consequence has consequences even if it is just choosing which way you will go to school which for me for instance i have two and just for me to make this decision it it will have consequences it it will affect 
what people I will meet if I will meet some friends or just some old creepy guy (laughs) (laughs) and I just think that just the word consequences has like a deeper meaning because you know they're like when you murder someone their consequences their family will grieve you will hopefully (laughs) go to jail but I just think that really your day is full with uh you have the right to choose but Mm -hmm. every time you choose something some people Mm -hmm. might not be happy because of your decision you know if you will choose to go to one supermarket or the other maybe some people just I don't know won't have money to buy dinner because you didn't buy a salad from them but you bought a salad from a different people so this is why I chose the seventh one wow I love whenever you're ready um, I think I was going to say seven as well, but only because I think it's important, mostly because people tend to ignore it. Like with all the others, people are kind of aware of the marketing strategies and things. If you're going shopping and you see like sales, you know that they're trying to make you buy something because it's kind of obvious. They like basically paint it on the windows. Mm-hmm. But it's um, with number seven, people tend to ignore um, what the consequences of their actions are which mm. in turn can be really harmful to a lot of people as well yeah so you're agreeing with both Jenny and Zara very good you're just saying like number seven is very important because a lot of people ignore it LJ I think consequences are like probably the first most important for me but I think the second would be thinking at a margin because you have to think strategically and sometimes when prices do go up or you don't always find what you need there always has to be kind of like another way and you have to make you know room in your mind and think ahead sometimes so I think that that's really important because if you don't think at a margin and kind of um limit yourself or try stick to one price so like let's say you always pay one price for something. If you don't find it for that price, you won't buy it. Sometimes you just need to make yeah. sure that there's a bit of room. So if you can't find yeah. it, you need another substitute and there's another way to go so you can keep moving on. And you can think about this future and how much it'll benefit you. Well, I'm, I'm very impressed because understanding thinking and margin was very hard for me and hearing what you just said, I'm very impressed. And I think it's very correct because you have to be thinking and margin every single day you can't be such a perfectionist having to spend oh I have to spend $50 on groceries every week I can't spend a cent more or a cent less Uh, I really agree with you and I liked how you got out of number seven (laughs) okay Um, who's next Uh, is there anyone who would like to share if not you can always type oh Gina Gina go ahead I think I'm changing from consequences. I think for me, the most important thing is to pay this good because I think all the economy is based on pay this good, all capital is based on the is based on this, and I think it is one of the most important because we we are in all days we are trading for something, a glass of water, like when we go to buy water. Like, I think it's important more than consequences because first we need to do an action, then we will have the consequences. So, you're saying principle which one? Um, trade is good. Trade is good, okay. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, I, I really like your argument because uh, that is one of the one of the two I believe is very important. Yeah, trade is good because without trade, there won't be consequences. That's what you said. Okay, I I like how you got out of your margin. Uh, Who else? Yeah, is there anyone else who would like to share? And if you don't have an opinion, that's totally fine. I'm sure that, you know, you can gain more understanding and you, you gain more understanding through this meeting. Sarah, go ahead. I just maybe want to add now, as we said that we th- there needs to be a trade before consequences. Maybe we should say that firstly, there needs to be a market 
then <laughs> there can be a trade and finally <laughs> after that there can be consequences so right. definitely uh the sixth uh, principle is definitely also important because if there is a market nothing will happen yeah, see, I think this is very good because instead of just telling you guys maybe like what we think or what I think is the most important, making you realize and think about which one is the most important is very, very meaningful. And yes, the, the, the principle that I think is most important is number six, that there has to be a market. Without a market, there can be a trade. Without a trade, there can be consequences. Without trade, there won't be decisions that you even need to make, right? So, um, yeah, but definitely as what everyone said, consequences is very important. That's the one thing that people always ignore in economics. Yeah, okay. and by the end, all these come together to really make, to really, you know, make trade in economics together. Okay, yeah. uh, Jenny and then LJ. Um, I just wanted to say a quick point since like um, everybody has made very compelling points. Um, I think one of the ones that I really like stuck with was, I keep blanking on names, but um, someone had talked about thinking at um, margin um, mm -hmm. with the third principle and um, hearing their argument, I thought like it was a very smart way to think about it because if you're like, if you strict, like if you think about one thing strictly instead of allowing yourself to be flexible, then you won't be able to get yourself into trade because trade is about being flexible and understanding that not everything's going to go your way. So I think that, um, I, I do agree that there needs to be a market before trade, but I also do think that you need to have that like margin of thinking before you get into trade because it trains your mind to understand that you're not going to get an outcome that you always want. Right. And so understanding that allows you to um, be okay with what you get. Like if you get less right. of something or if you get more of something, mm -hmm. you're all right with it because you've already trained your mind to do so. So I think thinking at margin is probably one of um, my um, higher points too, because it just, it just uh, brings to light how important it is to make sure that you're flexible and you're open-minded. Yeah, I love how you said that. And oh, also wow. forming other people's points. Okay, LJ? Um, I also have an argument for um, there needs to be a market for trade to occur because I was looking at them all and I was like, oh, actually, that's really important because like you said, a market is a place where trade can occur. And if you don't have a market, then where is trade going to occur? So when you think about it, that none of the other seven principles will even be needed if you don't have a market because they, they're all used when you're trading and when you want to buy something or sell something That's like right. um, scarcity forces and trade-offs that, you know, that has something to do with the market and trading. Um, there are consequences. That's when you make decisions, which are usually, you know, when you're buying things or selling things and mm -hmm. everything kind of goes back to the fact that there's a market and you, you trade things in that market. And when you don't have a market, there's nowhere to trade. Wow. Perfect. Well, that's that's very good. You really made an argument, not only saying how why that is important, why the others need this to be important, and I think that's 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 very very good. But I think you know, in addition, previously you said it's really important the thinking at margin, and I think everything correlates to each other because we know that without a market, a trade can occur, and without a trade, nothing else can occur. But with nothing else, trade won't be good, and if there's no good trade, there no longer will be markets. So everything correlates. And I think everyone, what everyone said is correct. Azara? Uh, I just wanted to say that I really like how we try, how we are trying to connect those principles together. And I was thinking about thinking at margin that for some people, especially for poor people, it can be really hard, uh, especially nowadays with the high inflation, because when you have strictly a uh, hundred dollars you can spend a week on groceries for a family you're a single mother and uh, you know you need to pack snacks for your kids you need to buy some ham or cheese but you know you cannot spend you cannot spend more on cheese for instance more than ten dollars and if there isn't a cheese uh cheaper than ten dollars you have to choose a different thing and that that connects 
the third principle to the second principle, cost versus benefit, because then you will think, uh, am I able to buy a cheese that's $15 or should I get just bread for seven and I will be able to buy, I don't know, whatever else. So I, I really appreciate how we're trying to connect things because I really can understand that better when we connect them. Yeah, I love wow. your summary. I think that's a very good conclusion for our meeting.